Alright, so let's run the project and see what happens. And you can see that it loaded into a browser. Now we could use browser to actually make those HTTP requests, but when we are creating an API, it's much better and much more productive to use a Postman. So we of course will be using Postman for that. But what I'm going to take is the localhost number from it and then bring in the Postman. And here I will make the HTTP GET request call. So we pass in the localhost from the browser, then API and then slash and that's events. This should give us all the events in the database. So let's see what happens. And we are not getting events. In fact, we are getting some strange error. So let's see what's going on. And what's going on is right here. It's unable to resolve service for type comedy events dot services dot I event repository while attempting to activate the comedy events controllers. So what's happening here is that we did not register the interface and the repository in our services. So we of course need to fix that. So I'm gonna close this and we can go to our startup and here after the context I'll add services dot and this time we are adding the iEvent repository along with the event repository that implements the interface. So we are going to use not just add but add scoped. And like I said, we are passing in the I event repository, which is implemented in the event repository. So this is our registration for this service. But of course we need to bring in the namespaces, which are in the events.services. So now if you run it again, it should actually work. But before we do that, I'm going to disable the browser from opening when we run the project, because like I said, we are going to use the postman only. So when we click run project, it will run, but without the browser being open. And to do that, I'll go to Social Explorer, right click the comedy events, go to properties, and then in debug, I will uncheck launch browser. And another thing I'm going to do is to specify a localhost. It doesn't really matter what the number is, I just wanted something I can easily remember. So it's going to be, let's say, 5700. That's going to be my localhost. So let's save all these changes and now let's run the project. And the project started without the browser, so I'll go to my postman and I will resend the get request, but I changed the localhost to 5700, so that's going to be our HTTP request for localhost. And then of course we have the slash API slash events, so let's click send. And we are getting our events. You can see we have our event ID 1 because we only have one event along with the venue. And the gigs are null because we did not specify that we also want gigs. So that was for gigs included equals false. So what happens when we do question mark and then include gigs equals true? So this is the parameter that should return the gigs along with this event. Let's click send. And you can see we are getting the events and here we are getting the gigs, but something's wrong. You can see it even indicates here that it's expecting a comma instead of uh, quotes. And what is happening here is called a reference looping. So let me go back to our controller here actually not even controller, to Solution Explorer 
and open, for example, the event model. And you can see the event model has the venue in it, as well as the collection of gigs. And when we go to gig, it also has the event in it. So what is happening here that we have an event in both of these classes because they are related and that's the referential looping. It tries to get the event from the gig, it goes to an event, and then it tries to get the gig, which also has the event. So it's basically just in a loop trying to reference each other. And that's a fairly simple fix. Let's go to Solution Explorer and open startup.cs. And here we have to set the reference looping to be ignored. So in our services where we added the MVC, we set the compatibility version. And after that, I'm going to also set the reference looping. So I'll do another dot. And here I will add JSON options that will disable the reference looping. So we will add JSON options. And in a Lambda expression, I'll do O for options, goes into O dot and we want to go to the serializer settings that will serialize the JSON and then to the property of reference looping or reference loop handling. And the way we'll handle it is very simple. We'll specify that our JSON, which is in the Newton soft dot JSON dot reference loop handling. So this property we will set to ignore. And that will simply stop the looping from happening when two classes reference each other. So let's give it a try now. So my project runs, let's just rerun the get request. And you can see everything is now formatted correctly. We have our event with the venue and all the information for the venue and those two gigs that are happening in that event, as well as the comedians. So this is basically all the information for an event. We have the event, venue, gigs, and comedian for each of the gigs. The question is, do we really want all this information? So to limit what is actually being returned, we can create a special classes called DTO classes or data transfer objects, which will specify what properties of any of the given class we want to return in our requests. So let's create those DTO classes next.